This is um, Amanda's corner. So during the whole show, Amanda's been interviewing different people um, here and doing a wonderful job uh, in conjunction with Equestrian Life. And uh, as soon, I've got a, a two second slot here where I'm actually going to interview um, Amanda. And, um, and then it's over to Amanda and she's going to interview some really important people. And uh, Henry Hicks, who's the owner of one of the horses, I think he's running second um, in the three stars first up, Amanda. And, and then there are a few other really interesting characters. But Amanda, that's the first time I've seen a, a head cam used. And, um, and, and that was really wonderful, you doing sort of a commentary, live commentary right there. And I think um, one of the really important things there is when you were talking, um, that for all the guys that were watching, she, she really had a plan, you know, every single tree. She knew that that tree was likely not to be there by the time, you know, 20 um, riders had gone, but she was going to go to the left of the tree because she thought it would be better footing. I think that was about eight fences from home, and, and, and indeed you could see it on the cam. But, um, Amanda, there's a lot of time and effort goes into planning that cross-country course. Maybe uh, in, in just, you know, preparing to be where you are, how do I turn that on? I've just lost it, but I think um, I, I think um, you're running at the moment first, first in the one star class, and um, that's that's not an accident. And for those of you who just watched Amanda do that talk through with the head cam, that that was a wonderful illustration of how much planning had gone into it. She she was just sort of running through something she'd run through a hundred times before she rode that course. So most people don't get that part. Um, out there in the days before riding that cross country course, there's been a massive amount of homework. Maybe you could just um, take us through what you do to get a plan like that together. Oh, okay, Heath. Well, basically, um, I've walked the course three times so far, and um, for the first time, I've used the new Cross Country app, and the app, for once, actually did all my minute markers for me. So by minute markers, basically what we do is the one-star course, you have to travel at 520 metres per minute. So every minute, you will have travelled 520 metres. Now, to be really accurate and not overtax your horse or not run too slow, if you know where you should be every minute, it makes it much easier. And the big fat yellow watches we have beep every minute so so what I did is I went around with the app and uh, with my map as well and took a photo of every jump because I'm a bit of a visual learner so if I look at something it triggers a memory and I write notes so for example the first three fences are pretty pretty straightforward however there's corners there and we all know that where is really slippery so my biggest thing was look get out of that box when you can go straight go faster but be really careful of the turns um, other little things that I'll notice is like my horse is quite green so I don't mind taking extra time to set him up and setting him up means you know let him go a little bit slower into the fences so he can see it more. Um, I know there's parts on the course that are, are muddier so I might or twistier so where I can go f uh, faster along the polo fields or where it's straight I'll do that so that I can give him the best ground and not twist his legs off going through the other parts. So, so we have minute markers and when I remember the course in my head I go okay start box fence one, da -da, fence two, this, fence three, minute marker number one is by this tree. Uh, fence four, fence five, oh, fence five is two strides, I've got to go out wide, I've got to post in the background, set that up. So every course is like um, a series of directions, it's not just one, two, three, four. So yeah, three times in my head, know where I'm going, photos in the phone. Uh, this morning if we had have had too much rain I would have hiked it out there again to go and check what the footing was like and it also gives me an idea of what studs I'm going to run for the day, so the little metal spikes that we stick in their shoes. Um, if it had have rained I might have done a bit of a change and put bigger bigger studs in. So yeah, it's, so it's, uh, it's a fair bit of remembering to do, hey? So I, th I think the point is, is that when everyone's riding, you know, you, you first you get in start with riding in that it's great fun, and and your friends are doing it, and uh, and that that's a wonderful reason for riding. But when you're out there um, at this level, I, I always say it's a collection of the wolves, if you like. It's it's where the guys right across Australia, they come from every state of Australia, and, um, and these guys, it's a day at the office. So when they're going out there on the cross country course, they're not actually walking it with their friends they're, they're really really making a plan and uh, and memorizing really 
technical, tactical um, routes that are going to give them the best opportunity to win. Now, I think if you had a conversation with all the top people in the placings today, after the cross country, they'll all have their own way of coming up with these plans. So as, you, as you're sort of coming up through the sport, it's really important. You could hear Amanda talk about visualization. It's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's like sports psychology, but, but it's very, very powerful. And so to be able to do what Amanda's just done there is a, is a collection of uh, very sophisticated training techniques. And so, you know, to start with, you haven't a clue about them, but as you start to get exposed to that sort of thing, you need to recognize that there is very real processes that are being used to come up with that sort of result. So, Amanda, you're in first place. Now, um, you ran second in the dressage, first in the cross country. Tomorrow is the show jumping. Now, one of the things about show jumping is it takes um, some new qualities that haven't been tested in the dressage, some new qualities that haven't been tested on the cross country. And one of those things is that, um, is that the horses need to be very careful of their fences. Um, they don't, they, some of the horses that go brilliantly cross country um, don't mind giving the fence a little bit of a rub. And you, uh, for those of you watching the water fences, you will have seen some of the horses actually go down on their tummy and skid across and you go, ooh, but they, they're actually good at it and they, they do a good job of it and, and they don't get hurt. Um, but you can't do that show jumping. And so um, tomorrow it tests the horses that are not only brave and, and creative in their heads, which the cross country um, will test, it'll, it'll test the horses that are very rail aware. If you're doing elite athletics or gymnastics as a kid, um, you know, you can be really, really good at doing tumbles in the air, but you've always got to have um, a talent for knowing where the ground is, because landing those tumbles is part of what makes a score. Well, it's the same jumping. When the horses go up in the air, they can jump like mad, have enormous power up in the air, but if they don't have an inner sense of being rail aware, knowing exactly where the rails are, they have rails down. So that the next question to Amanda is is uh, you're in the lead right now, Amanda. Um, you know, I mean, uh, being able to hold that lead now is going to be dependent upon your ability to uh, leave the rails up. And, uh, you know, I mean, Amanda's a great um, rider. Make no mistake about that. And she can ride clear show jumping rounds. So this is going to mean that Amanda's got to do a good job. And, and everyone's human. Everyone can make a mistake. but. Barring bad luck, she's going to do a reasonable job. She needs a horse, nevertheless, that's very careful. Now, she's, um, uh, she's less than one rail in the lead, so one rail down can certainly let second place get her, which is Chelsea Priestley. Um, uh, and, that, and, and she's on a horse called Blame It on the Bear. And um, I, I think, um, so, Amanda, tomorrow. What, what sort of process do you go through from now? And um, does your guy, um, uh, and you call him Loxley, does, does Loxley have an inner rail awareness that, that gives you a, a, a real serious chance of being clear? Um, yeah, look, he is careful and he's clever, but he's still green. He's ex inexperienced. So the thing I find hard with the one-star horses here is it's a bit like warming up outside and it's all nice and you have all your friends and then suddenly you throw them in the shed and you shut the door and they're in there with flags and rails and people and all this stuff. So uh, Roxley's probably his biggest uh, positives are that he has a really good regular canter stride and he's very adjustable. Um, my job tomorrow is to be in charge of straightness and speed and his job is to be in charge of his legs. I can't make him lift his legs up any higher, um, but I can give him a good ride and I can try to you know, not face him directly towards crowds and ride lines that give him the best chance to not be distracted. Um, and I guess I've got to make sure I warm him up well if he feels a little bit stiff, get him out there, take him for a good jog so he feels his best. Um, and I think I'm just going to try and help him. I'm just going to try and nurture him and help him as much as I can so that he can do the best job at this stage in his early, early stage in his career. 
Well, I I'm sure all of us um, wish you the very best of luck. Now, just taking it one step further from that, um, the One Star, that's the first of the international competitions. And so if you're a dressage enthusiast, um, uh, you know, it's the same as pre-St. George dressage. So in the old days, One Star eventing was called novice uh, level, which was a, a silly name because, you know, there was nothing beginnerish about this level. And, of course, once they get to this level, that's the beginning of international competition. And the question is, are they likely to make two star? Are they likely to make three star? Three star is where the Australian teams are selected to go to the Olympics. Amanda is, um, you ha has in, in previous years ridden at, um, at the Olympics, Sydney 2000. So I can tell you there's a fire burning within her that um, you know wants to go back into that top range. Amanda, is Loxley the horse? Can, can he go right to the top? Well, so far, of all the fences I've jumped, I don't think Loxley has ever had to try. So he is a very special horse. He moves really well. He has a very sensible, thoughtful brain in his head, and he's very scopey. Um, I have another horse that won the one stay here last year, William Wordsworth. They're both bred and owned by the same people, Michelle Clough and Pete Hurley. Um, so between William, Forrest, Pete, Michelle and I, I think I've probably got the best chance to go be on Olympic and World Championships now than I've ever had. Well, I think we all wish Amanda just the very best of luck. Now, that was uh, Pete and Michelle, uh, the owners of your two horses. And um, I, I think uh, we have a, an, an owner here. Well, actually, I'm going to hand over to the lead, to the interviewing back to you, Amanda. And uh, the, the winner of the three star um, on a very, very fancy horse, Tim Boland, is about to come in. So, ladies and gentlemen, it, uh, that's, that's from Amanda and, and myself. And I think we're about to see Tim Boland come to the stand.